uh, in this segment, we're going to talk about body woods. And anyone that doesn't think body woods have an effect on tone are uh, idiots. So anyways, let's bring Pete in and talk about <laughs> body, body woods. Well, you'd agree with that, right, Pete? I wouldn't use the same term. I would use uh, it. I would say maybe. <laughs> I would say maybe. Um, so you have to be PC. I don't have to be PC about nothing. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't use that term. I would say unaware maybe of the of the effects that body woods have on tone, um, because the instrument still is being being basically uh, generated from the from the tone of the wood or 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 the uh, you know you can. I don't know if you can pick that up but it's hopefully we do it's you know it's there's a resonance and acoustic quality to the wood itself um, for that reason I have to be careful how I choose woods based on what the customer wants and these are my selections that I typically use um, and, and I have kind of an idea of what I'm gonna get when I use these types of woods here's uh, one of my favorites which is African mahogany it's gorgeous wood I'll zoom in on that this one actually has a lot of figure in it. Yeah, that's gonna be beautiful. Yeah, and, and it's this this wood typically this is all generalization, but typically it basically enhances the low mid range. So if somebody wants a really fat finger style tone to start with, mm -hmm. this is a great body wood to use. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, so I have to take weight in consideration most of the time when I'm building bases for people. So that's always taken into consideration if that's the tone they want. Mm -hmm. Another wood I started to use recently is Obichi, which is also an African wood. Doesn't have a lot of figuring to it. But... Well, this has a lot of ribbon in it. It's yeah. it's actually it can be kind of figured, very similar to uh, ribbon mahogany. Um, but this, like I said, this has a great kind of lively tone to it. Yeah. Um, and I and it's been compared to old growth alder. Okay which I kind of agree with. It has a lot of mid-range for such a light wood. It's very light. Sometimes it's lighter than swamp ash. So and will we say that all those pre-64 fenders were old growth alder? That yes. Were made out of? Okay. Yes. And that's and they typically have a warmer, fuller, punchier tone than, say, the, the, the bases that are being used now with tighter, newer growth alder that's a lot denser. Uh, well, you have a fretless upstairs built with that, and it just sings. Yeah, it's, just it's, gorgeous. it's a great wood. It's very deceptive because it's so light, but it's actually very, very present and focused in the mid range. Okay, what do we have here? This is our, you know, one of our favorite woods as bass players. It's a swamp ash. Yeah, we like it because it's lightweight for one thing. It also has a very even response through the the low range all the way up to the top end. Typically, and it has a very kind of not scooped, but kind of. Uh, smooth mid-range which allows it to be very you know very useful for it's good slap based wood yeah, for sure slapping and popping um it, it does the uh, modern p bass uh jazz bass type tone very well i love it in my basses uh it's very versatile with a preamp too the preamp will allow you to manipulate the mid-range quite a bit without you know without competing with the body wood would you say that's one of the lightest options Next to the obichi and, 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 and Spanish cedar, it is pretty light. Okay. It's typically light. And I mean, I try to make, you know, I try to select lighter pieces, but it's getting harder and harder to get light stuff anymore. Uh, most of the big companies are, are buying it up as fast as they can get it, and it's going overseas. So a lot of it for the smaller luthier is not, it's not available. So you really have to, you really have to shop around, which I, I'm very aggressive in how I go about getting it. Uh, this is alder. And this alder is a lot heavier than typical, um, like the old growth alder. So this is this actually has a heavier, more mid range kind of focus, mm -hmm. but still a great, it's still a great wood for. You, know, you see, I have a Lions Pride design on there, which is more like a jazz base. Right. So this is a great wood for that. I, I love it in my other designs as well. Um, That's got some nice figure for alder. Sometimes alder is really bland. That's got some nice. Yeah. When he first pulled it out, I thought that was swamp ash. We could totally probably work done. around this. I don't know if this would get turned into a body, but the, you know, if this gets taken out of that, that's fine. But right. uh, that's there again. I have to, you know, that may not be there when I play in the wood, and then then we we wind up with it. Or you just call it a beauty mark, right? Uh, it's a little bigger than a beauty mark. <laughs> <laughs> probably won't use that. Um, this this is, wood sounds great, by the way. This is another really light wood, and it's a really kind of uh, different sounding wood than all the rest of it because it's Spanish cedar, it's light, it has a lot of enhanced low 
low end, but also an enhanced top end, which isn't typical of a body wood. Um, so it has a very neutral mid range, which if I use the right pickups, if I want to enhance the mid range with the pickups and the fingerboard, then this particular body works really well for that. And I get a very even response all the way across. It also helps to give uh, some added tone to the high strings. So if I'm doing a six or seven string, or I'm doing like a high C or high F on a, on a six string, then this body would works really well for that. We were playing one upstairs and the word that came to my mind was buttery. It sounded really buttery yeah. in the chords. It can sound kind of scooped if you don't use a, a pickup with enough mid-range content, but if you use a pickup with content and a, a fingerboard that's going to have some uh, some upper mid-range uh, added to it, it's going to have it's going to have a nice real balanced all the way across the spectrum type of tone. So that's Spanish Seaver. I like that one a lot. You have more options than this, but these are your favorites right now. These are my typical ones. And if weight isn't a major concern or somebody wants a real punchy sound um, with more focus, then I have stuff like White Limba, which is what this is. Which and, is what my bass is made out of. Right. It sounds awesome. But yours is actually, I think, uh, yeah, yours is actually White and Black Limba yep. mixed. So this has a great focus to the sound. Uh, it's very dense. It can be a little heavy. But if weight's not a major concern, then this is a great choice for, for punchy tone. This over here is black limba, right here. And same, a, same tree, just a darker part of the... Yeah, typically what I've been told with, with the black and white limba, what's the main difference is this is typically, if the tree is standing up, when it's, when it's uh, fell or chopped down, it basically sits in the, in the, on the forest floor and it's still through capillary action, it's still drawing in minerals and, and, and uh, sediment. And that's what gives a lot of this. So when you actually harvest one of these trees, the upper half is the white and the lower half is the, is the black. Interesting. It starts off, they all start off white. So that's how it's been explained to me. If I'm wrong on that, I don't know. <laughs> All we know is that it sounds really good. Yeah, and there again, if the weight isn't a major concern, I can use that too. It looks it looks beautiful. Um, so those are my my typically my major uh, sources for body woods. My typical first choices. Um, it all kind of depends on what we work up with the customer, and that's what I I, I come up with. I, I also I'm also using a basswood a lot. Basswood is kind of a um, it gets a bad rap because it's on a lot of affordable or less expensive instruments, but it's actually a very good wood. It, again, it sounds a lot like the older growth, uh, alder from the sixties and stuff, because it's, it's got a very light, light body, but very dense grain. Sure. Um, it's great for solid finishes. So this is actually a really good wood and I've started using it quite a bit. Of course, it's all hand selected. It's all premium stuff. This isn't, you know, this isn't crap at all, <laughs> basically. So how long would you say, like these woods here on the table, how long do you think you've owned these pieces of wood for? Because you have to age these for a long time. I right? usually keep them typically for about a year in the shop. Um, they start off in my, in my wood storage. Then they get processed into length. Then they get processed into dimensions. And then they sit for about a year uh, before they actually get put in process. So and why have, do you need to do that, just for people? To I just like to have them in my, in my possession. Um in my acclimation for as long as I can so that everything I put together is basically from that same um, humidity ratio. There and, won't be any surprises with the wood warp yeah, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, because sometimes I get wood from, from other countries or, 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 or you know, the other side of the country and it comes to me very, very wet or, or sometimes even really dry. And when that happens, it gets in here, it has to acclimate. And if you just let it sit around, it's just going to go crazy because it doesn't, doesn't know what it's supposed to do until it's until it's sat around for a while and it's you know basically acclimated. Are there guys building bases that just get the wood and throw it together immediately? Some people do, and I, I think that's uh, that's, be a, to that's a dangerous uh, habit to get into because you know then you don't really know what's going to happen uh, six months down the road because the wood could keep acclimating mm -hmm. if it isn't completely dry. Of course, I take a, a moisture meter and, and and check all this stuff. By the time it finally goes into production, it's usually about eight percent. To six percent, and and in Ohio, it's actually very, very, uh, very good for building bases and stuff like that because it, it doesn't swing uh, to a lot of different degrees with the humidity. So I don't have to worry about um, big swings in, in from spring to winter 
you know, things nice. like that. So it's a good building environment. I think I get about 15, 15 to 20% swing throughout an entire year, which is not a big deal. Nice. Um, so those are the body woods. Great. Thanks, Pete. Hopefully that was uh, some good information for all of you. And if you want, uh, tune in to some more videos and see what else I have to offer. Thanks.